The morning hadn't gone too well so far. The sky was flat, the sun hadn't turned up, and neither had mouse. This had gone wrong, that had gone wrong, and the day was half over and nothing was achieved. <coughs> what is keeping that mouse? I asked him to find a simple bit of information and he's been gone for ages. Oh well, if you want something doing well, do it yourself, Rhubarb muttered and went off down to the shed. Oh, at least he set the mouse wheel going. Hope there's enough spin left to at least get myself started, Rhubarb mumbled, and hit the start key, the big nail on the right. Gee, Willikins, Rhubarb exclaimed out loud as he peered at the live cam picture on his computer screen to see Mouse turning the pages of a hefty looking information book. There must be a better way than this to find things out, to access information, Rhubarb decided, and leant back in his chair for a bit of a think. Try to think, Rhubarb was thinking to himself in a thinking kind of way, when he spotted Walter's spider web. Goodness gracious me! That old web of Walter's can't have been cleaned for years. Look at the state of it. An old fly, a budgie's feather, a dandelion clock, even a helicopter off the sycamore tree. That's when the light went on. OK, don't panic. That's it. I'm going to design a free information and shopping service, Rhubarb grinned. He grabbed the microphone. Mouse, forget whatever it is you're doing. Stop rummaging about in that book. Hold your horses. Take a breather. Halt. Oh, for goodness sake, cease. Come up. There's real work to do. Crackle Rhubarb. <laughs> As Rhubarb's old clock bones ground away the hours, he and Mouse, rodent scholar from Silicon Valley, beavered away designing what Rhubarb had decided to call a web of information, or spider for short. Ah, oh, all done. Rhubarb beamed, and as the sun came up, he switched on his microphone once more, and the loudspeakers on the shed roof barked. Spider Jesse, two o'clock, on the lock. Two o'clock, spider testing. Spider testing, whatever next. I sometimes wonder if that dog has even a single thread of sense. Forty winks, what do you say, Mouse? Oh, forty it is. We deserve a rest, agreed Mouse. <sighs> While Rhubarb's alarm clock made the most dreadful noise, it took a few moments for old Sleepyhead to realise that it wasn't morning. It was afternoon. It's time to spider! Why didn't you wake me earlier? He barked. And grabbing one of his new Marylebone jelly-scented biscuits, he chomped it down on the run and was in the garden with Mouse in two bites. Big crowd, said Rhubarb. Mega crowd, said Mouse. And Rhubarb began the spider sales pitch. On my shed roof, you will see what I know many of you have jeered at as broomsticks and old umbrella skeletons. <laughs> However, they are part of a sophisticated communications network, a web, if you like, that sends and receives information through the space. The web that Walter Spider built inside my shed was my inspiration for today's demonstration of Spider. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that the birds want to buy bird seed. Hoggy Malone wants some rare music. Poodle Princess is looking for something of a theatrical nature. Or Mole is in want of certain mining equipment. You lot could order the lot on Spider. All from my shed. After a bit of persuasion, Rhubarb had his first customer, yes. Poodle Princess. She ordered several copies of an acting book. Then Mole appeared from amongst the grass roots and shoveled soil all over Rhubarb's feet. But he did order half a dozen new pickaxes. And finally, Custard ordered a bundle of sheet music for Moggy Malone. And nothing in particular, just something chirpy. <laughs> Feeling quite pleased with themselves after sending the orders, Rhubarb and Mouse sat down for a breather. Oi! Where's them music pages? Custard bellowed from the fence. Please note my inquiry, he whined on, just as a pickaxe, wrapped in brown paper, thudded into the middle of the lawn, followed by another, and another. Then a pile of books landed. Then it started raining birdseed. 
be lost on foot. And then a storm of sheet music, billowing everywhere. Everyone ran for cover as the delivery went on and on and on. I think we're trapped, said Rhubarb. No, there is a way out, said Mouse, switching on Spider and muttering, Ah, uh, here we are, rubbish removal, skip delivery and collection, he squeaked with a chirp. And with a tweak of the keyboard spring, the message was winging its way through the space. Well done, Mouse, said Rhubarb, as they stepped out of the shed into the fairly tidy garden, just as the last skip taken away and one of Post Dog's weasels drove off. Oi, I said, when thump, I couldn't believe it. By the way, Mouse, did you ever find what it was I asked you to look for? No, squeaked Mouse. You told me to forget what I was doing, remember? Hmm, but if you could remember, I could look it up on Spider, said Rhubarb, and everyone groaned to water. On the sideboard, where Rhubarb kept his bone china, there was a photograph of himself taken in the garden on the occasion of his first flight. Ah, the spike. Those were the days, he thought, just as his bone fell around. It was Mouse, Rodent Scholar, to say that he saw no reason why Stratopod Rocket couldn't be designed on Roostar, the very latest of Rhubarb software, designed especially for stargazing and deep probing into the space. Thank you, Mouse. Good night, said Rhubarb in a chillingly Gaelic kind of way. Um, not uh, interrupting, I hope. No, Custard, come in, old chap. Sit down. Have a fish, said Rhubarb. Dreaming about the old days, eh? Inquired Custard. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the new designs for the Stratopod and high-speed rocket travel through the space, Rhubarb murmured. After a restless night thinking about lightning speed travel and how, thanks to him, millions would someday be able to journey through the space from one end of the Earth to the other in eight minutes, in luxury, in a stratopod, Rhubarb stumbled into the garden. Great flying weather, grinned Custard. Ah, Custard, of course, beamed Rhubarb, the perfect research guinea pig. Here, what's brightened you up? inquired Custard. You have my dear friend, smiled Rhubarb. How would you like to be a stratopod pilot? A test stratopod pilot, no less. Hmm. We're going to need a pilot, Mouse puffed as he spread the very latest stratopod plans out on the lawn. Got one, chirped Rhubarb, and they went over the plans. And by late afternoon, a wind tunnel design had been perfected. Some of the birds chirped in and helped build the wind tunnel, which would test the aerodynamic properties of custom, soon to become the world's first stratopod test pilot. Now then, Custard, this could be dangerous, so pay attention, said Rhubarb, just as Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess strolled by. Ah, going somewhere nice, inquired Rhubarb. To the fur dressers, darling said Poodle Princess. Got tickets for the Big Rock concert, grinned Moggy Malone. Ooh, and we're working on a Big Rocket concept, beamed Rhubarb, and the birds went wild. See you later, smiled Rhubarb, and Mouse began briefing custom. The, uh, the configuration and structure of our body, bo bo bodies is such that when propelled beyond certain speeds, an effect known as G-force becomes Yes, yes, let's get on with it, Mouse, for goodness sake, said Rhubarb, who took charge and got straight to the point. This structure is designed with great expectations and it is called a wind tunnel. Uh. Its purpose, as you will soon find out, is to test the shape of my test pilot, that's you, before you take off like grease lightning in my new stratopod into the space. <laughs> this pole is known as the hold pole. Pay attention and you will grasp it thus. Rhubarb demonstrated and felt a certain degree of achievement as Custard's paws curled around the support. Questions? Rhubarb asked, and Custard said he wondered what was the tea. 
This is hardly the time to be thinking about afternoon tea, barked Rhubarb, then turned and nodded to Mouse. Prepare to switch on, Rhubarb called, and Mouse, rodent scholar, tugged with all his might at the mighty red lever. Oh! As the blades of the great fan gathered momentum, an airy breeze inside the wind tunnel turned to a flurry. Custard tightened his grip on the hole pole, and the hurricane followed. The brilliant future of Stratopod, right here in front of us, roared Mouse proudly. History in the making, Rhubarb bellowed in a scientific kind of way, just as Rookie strolled up to see what all the noise was about and was stripped naked, leaving Custard coughing and sputtering while Mouse struggled to turn the fan off. When Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess returned from the fur dressers, they found Mouse, rodent scholar, in shock. Rookie was standing starkers inside a cardboard box. Rhubarb had a blank look on his face, and Custard stood stunned, still holding the hole pole, which he'd torn, bolts and all, from its concrete foundations. Moggy Malone stood and stared. Her mouth was locked open. There was a teeny weeny squeak as she stared at the wobbly pink blob, only just recognizable as Custard. He'll be fine, whispered Rhubarb. <laughs> Too long in the wind tunnel, explained Mouse. Ha <laughs> ha. Cup of tea, Rhubarb went on in a skillful and diplomatic kind of way. Where's Poodle Princess? He added. She's here, noted Moggy Malone, as she pointed to the tangle that was only just recognizable as Poodle Princess. Fur dryer, far too long. Moggy whispered as Rhubarb stood with his mouth open, not a peep. Oh, darlings, I can't go to the Big Rock concert looking like this, screamed Poodle Princess. And I'm not going on no rocket trip looking like this, wailed Custard. <laughs> and Rookie saw the funny side of things and switched on the wind tunnel again. And everyone laughed till they couldn't stand up. It had been one of those very ordinary days in Rhubarb's garden. One of those days when the sun doesn't even bother to get out of bed. So neither had Rhubarb. It had been one of those days. Finally, the old street light outside Rhubarb's house twinkled on and Rhubarb's alarm clock rattled its bones. Time to get up. Time to journey into the space. Oh, I do love the nightlife, he said to himself in a talking-to-himself kind of way. Good evening. Here the And Wireless crackled as Rhubarb tucked into his favourite breakfast, baked bones on toast. Ah, just as everyone else is thinking about dinner, I'm starting my new day. All night, as the case may be for most, he munched and devoured the newspaper story about the thing that spoke. A film. Now show you at the local cinema. Well, we'll be off to see the film then, warbled Moggy Malone as she and Poodle Princess tiptoed like ghosts through the kitchen and waved their cinema tickets. The thing that spoke, they whispered and were gone. Have they gone? inquired Custard. Disappeared into the night, crunched Rhubarb, and went on to say that Mouse was down in the shed and that if he hadn't already eaten our midnight feast, he should have the computer running, so as to say, and the satellite equipment ready to probe the space to search the stars. Sure enough, Mouse was on the mouse wheel, and the computer was about to fire up so that they could monitor any information that they might find in the space. Rhubarb wound the sky scanner wheel this way and that, trying to pinpoint the whereabouts on whatever it was they were looking for. That is what happened. Whatever it was began to pulse into the shed's nerve center. Could it be that this was the night? The one night since the beginning of time when the three chums would discover secrets of the space all from Rhubarb's shed? 
Opening Starbay 2, Rhubarb announced. And with that, he pushed the cellular sensitive receptive antenna out through the squeaky trap door in the shed roof. In the meantime, the sky scanner's dish slowly turned this way and that, roaming the star clustered heavens. Slowly but surely, Rhubarb's sophisticated equipment investigated patterns of stars the plow, the pole star and then turned majestically towards Mars itself and probed deep into the space. And all the time, Custard kept asking about the bear. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Custard, whispered Mouse. If you're really desperate for the bear, then eat it, chocolate and all, but do it quietly, please. Oh, and while you're at it, you may as well polish off the last of the fairy buns. No, I just want the chocolate bear, said Custard. Eyes met. Nothing was said. Rhubarb didn't blink. Custard stopped eating. Mouse didn't move. What could it be? Whispered Rhubarb into Mouse's ear. Just as Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone tumbled into the shed, both as white as ghosts. <laughs> it's out there, puffed Moggy. I've never in all my life ever seen or heard such a strange thing as is out there, she wheezed. And Poodle Princess nodded dramatically and didn't, or couldn't, utter a single sound. As sure as I'm standing here, I tell you, that whatever it is, the creature has millions of teeth, she gasped. While all the time, the thumping thumps came closer. Mouse, efficient as ever, switched the listening devices to automatic and Rhubarb turned the shed light off. Hiding in the corner of the shed, the plucky little group huddled together, except for Rhubarb, who plucked up enough courage to peep through the window. Look at the house, Rhubarb whispered with a thin, awestruck breath. Look at the strange shadow. Is it the thing that spoke? It can't be the thing that spoke. It hasn't said anything yet whispered Moggy. Oh, Rhubarb, darling, I may be out for some time, said Poodle Princess, and fainted. The others stared at the shadow. Oh, it's millions of teeth, whispered Moggy. It's moving, squeaked Mouse, just as the shed door burst open. And everyone ran off into the night, even Poodle Princess, who was still asleep. The sky scanner was left to scan the sky, the computer was left humming to itself, and the last of the fairy buns were left in the dark. When Mrs. Hedgehog waddled into the shed, it looked, she thought, as though someone had left in a hurry. She wondered what on earth had happened. I thought I heard someone here. Someone must have scared them off, she muttered to herself, and shrugged her prickly shoulders and began to tuck into the delicious fairy buns. Mm. Oh, <laughs> can't let these go mm, stale. She munched, and suddenly she was aware of a strange noise. It sounded very close indeed. Oh, I don't like the sound of that at all, said Mrs. Hedgehog, and rolled off into the night just as the computer started talking gibberish. Moments later, Rhubarb's garden lit up, brighter than an ordinary day, and with one last thurump, Whatever it was, it was gone. And gone, too, was Mrs. Hedgehog's shadow from the house. Was there something out there that night? I'm sure I heard something, said Mo. It was a very still day. Not a leaf moved. The clouds didn't move. The statue-like birds didn't move. The bird that liked statues didn't move. It was a very still day indeed. Then, before Rhubarb could pick up whatever it was that had kept him so still for so long, a muddy hand grabbed at the artifact. <coughs> now things were moving along. Oh my, he is angry about something, thought Cassidy. Rhubarb bellowed at the grass. Oh, ah, oh, uh, Custard, didn't see you, swallowed Rhubarb, and Custard said nothing. Uh, nice day. Uh, thought I saw something shiny. Hand. Gone, Rhubarb babbled. 
In the safety of the shed, Rhubarb was feeling really silly about yelling at the grass when suddenly Mole's trap door opened. Was that you making me look stupid in front of Custard? Rhubarb demanded. What are you talking about, boy? asked Mole. I am talking about you grabbing my ancient Roman coin just when I was about to pick it up. That is what I am talking about, Mole! huffed Rhubarb. Didn't know you were there, spluttered Mo, through a mouthful of coal. You shall have it back. Come on. How long has all this been here, right under my shed? Rhubarb echoed in a surprised kind of way. Oh, years, said Mo, and on down the damp stone stairway they went to the treasure trove room. Gold coins, diamonds, Roman swords, ancient Greek stuff, and even pictures of Egyptian buskins stacked to the ceiling. Mo, where did you get all this? Rhubarb whispered. Daft Romans, said Mo. They lost togas, swords, umbrellas, spears, shields, bus tickets, all kinds of stuff. They even lost an empire, boyo. Yes, but where's the treasure I found? whispered Rhubarb. Somewhere. There's heaps of stuff all over, or rather, under your garden. Mo muttered and mumbled and rummaged. Oh, really? gawped Rhubarb. And what are those? Mole hills, said Mo. They leave them all over lawns. Silly, really, but there we are. There's heaps of stuff all over, if you know where to look, of course. I could start a museum, Rhubarb daydreamed. I'd even allow cats in, he murmured. Of course, treasure finding togs, chuckled Rhubarb in an Egyptology kind of way. Grinding, filing, hammering and welding noises came from the shed, while Custard sat on the fence, very still. It was around four o'clock when Rhubarb appeared. I'm off to find more treasure, he announced and stumbled out onto the lawn in his new electric outfit and set off up the garden. All afternoon, up and down, up and down, up and down the lawn. He's been thundering up and down that ceiling all afternoon and found nothing. Best help him out, Mo decided, as he went into his treasure room and came back with a fistful of gold coins and glittering trinkets. Rubbish mostly, but quite nice, said Mo, and placed the ancient Egyptian swag under a molehill for rhubarb to unearth. Ow! Oh, 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 lucky me, shuddered rhubarb and took off his treasure-finding outfit. Holding up his find, Rhubarb blew, wiped, and stared. Ancient Egypt, he whispered to himself. What could it be? He breathed in a breathless kind of way and rubbed the booty till it shone like the day it was lost. Two pyramids? No, an Egyptian cat. Well, well, well. The reclining one should enjoy this, said Rhubarb, and polished the disc some more. As Rhubarb polished and buffed, the disc shone and shimmered until he could not believe his eyes. The ground trembled. The sun went in. The sky went dark. Mo scarpered. The birds went quiet. Custard stirred. The pyramids! Of course, the curse, barked Rhubarb, and demanded to know what on earth is going on. And as he spoke, the majestic image of Miao, the ancient Egyptian god cat, appeared and loomed over the garden and cast her generous shadow over a nervous custom. The spirit of Miao grants the most generous wish to the miserable one known as Custom. Speak your pitiful wish, Pink One. Oh, uh, oh, uh, well, uh, 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 what to say? Uh, 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 I wish for a gold. I 
wish this would stop. It was a very still day. This story starts early, very early. So far, the day had been glorious. So far, the sun had kept his hat on, and so far, the grumpy cloud had kept his distance. So far, so good. Rhubarb had already been out and about for a bit of a job. He started the early birds, bumped into a couple of bumblebees, collected the milk from the step, and hung up his jogging boots and his thinking cap, all before breakfast. Now, he thought to himself, a bit early for marley-bone jellies. I know, baked bones on toast. Mmm, delicious. And so, with his heart set on breakfast, Rhubarb set about making toast. Ah, no bread, he groaned. No bread, no toast. Out in the garden, Rhubarb worked custard. Any bread, he asked. A couple of stale slices will do for toast. Bread? Do you realise that I was about to tuck into a whopper of a chocolate-coated fish and you interrupt me? Bothering me over a couple of slices of bread. Mm. Custard grumbled on, but Rhubarb had already gone and was digging up his bone phone. Oh. Yes. Poodle yes. Princess, I'm not going alone. They'll have bread, he mumbled to himself, but there was no answer from either of them. Standing under the old conker tree, Rhubarb could hear his computer in the shed singing to itself. I could make some bread. Yes, Rhubarb said excitedly, and his new idea made him feel as warm as toast. The computer would not start. Whirr and slump. Whirr and slump was all the computer would do when Mouse walked in. Aha, just the chap, beamed Rhubarb. And knowing which side his bread was buttered, Mouse was up on the mouse wheel in a jiffy and jogged the computer to life. What are you going to make? Mouse huffed. Toast, Rhubarb replied. You need bread for that, Mouse offered. Aha! Ooh. Here we are, bread making. OK, you can stop that now. Look, mix this, do that, wait. It's easy, beamed Rhubarb, and the two set off for the kitchen with the recipe for bread. In the kitchen, they mix the bread and do that. Once done, Rhubarb and Mouse settled into deck chairs for the most important part of bread making, the waiting. I thought you were supposed to be making bread, not loafing around in the sun, Custard whined from the fence. We are making bread, squeaked Mouse. We are at the most important waiting stage. Oh, there you are. I've oft told you that waiting was an important part of life. Custard, Mark my words, if you don't stop your half-baked ramblings, we will have you on toast this afternoon. So far, so good. The timer had pinged, the waiting was over. My baked bones on toast breakfast will have to be afternoon tea, announced Rhubarb, as he and Mouse set off up to the house, when suddenly a window broke, then another. The door burst off the hinges and the dough boiled over from the chimneys and tumbled down the roof like hundreds of little bread roll hailstones. The recipe said it would rise if we waited, squeaked Mouse. Yeah, it's supposed to rise up, not take over, said Rhubarb, as the chair stepped away from the house and the dough swallowed everything in its greedy path. Then it stopped. Mouse stared. Custard stared. Rhubarb stared. I didn't need this, he whispered. <laughs> and Mouse looked at Custard and gently shook his head. We need an engineer. Get me Mole. He's clever, said Rhubarb, and Custard held the bone phone while Mouse spoke. <sighs> Moggy Malone turned up and quavered at the size of the unbaked loaf. Rookie arrived and said, Core. And while the birds made a din in the half swamped old cockatry, Poodle Princess made an entrance and announced the whole event as farcical, just as Mo dug his way out of what was left of the lawn and found himself sandwiched between everyone. Ah, Mo, said Rhubarb excitedly. But before he could go on, Mo's little eyes lit up at the sight of the Alpine loaf. Mo, Rhubarb went on, 
There's not a crust in this for you, but I beg you to use your engineering skills and make a molehill out of that mountain. Knees blowing up, said Mo, and everyone took a step back. Dynamite, swallowed rhubarb, thinking of his house. No, wait there, said Mo. He's gone. After everyone had waited nervously for what seemed longer than a usual bread-making wait, the muffled sound of a generator started up deep underground, and Mo appeared. That'll do it, he chuckled. <laughs> now what? asked Rhubarb. We wait, said Mo, and everyone looked at everyone else as the dough got bigger and bigger. <laughs> Air agency, millions of bubbles. Any minute now, I'll have it fixed. Mo shouted over his eyes at Rhubarb's ballooning house. Then, there she blows. Mo dug down, and the house went up. And it rained burnt toast for a week. Oh, crumbs, said Rhubarb. That takes the biscuit, sweet mouse. Tea, everyone. Afternoon tea, called Moggy Malone. Hot buttered scones, darling, added Poodle Princess. Better than sliced bread, said Rhubarb. <laughs> everyone chuckled and tucked in. <laughs> Balancing a boiled egg nestling within a bone china head cup, set upon a small bone china plate, with a spoon clamped between the thumb and finger, blue marley bone pattern in one hand and a mug of tea in the other, Rhubarb shouldered his way out into the garden. It was a lovely morning. At the first stroke of spoon pon egg, Rhubarb's highly tuned ears picked up the most sensitive notes of the tango. Bit early, he thought. However, Rhubarb being Rhubarb, he mulled on and dug deeper into the egg and came up with an idea. Dancing! Yes, everyone can dance, surely. So dancing it is, Rhubarb chirped. And as the last distant notes of the tango danced away on the morning breeze, Rhubarb decided. A grand dancing competition will be held during the afternoon. <laughs> All acceptable dance styles welcome. And that, happy dancers, means you can expect the jig, the fling, the samba, the hip-hop, country, jiving, twisting, rock and roll, and general shimmying. Pre-shuffle nibbles, slap-up feast, après tango, monster prize, I thank you. Sawing, hammering, out of tune, big fan whistling, wafted from the shed for the rest of the morning. Rhubarb was building a revolving dance floor. It was his own creation, from the choice of well sprung timber, right down to the very last step, the merest dust of dance floor chalk. The jewel in Rhubarb's revolving dance floor design was the mirror studded ball. It would remain static while dancers revolved beneath its brilliantly sparkling diamonds of reflected light. A unique rhubarb concept. Right on time and in time with a quick step, Post Dog rapped on rhubarb's shed door. Several shifty-looking weasels hovered in his wake, ready to haul the dance floor into position for launch. <laughs> ah, Post Dog most punctual, beamed rhubarb, and the grubby hauliers shifted the dance floor plank by plank. Mesdames, Messieurs, let the dancing begin. Rhubarb's bark echoed across the garden, and the grand dance competition began in full swing. Several of the birds sat in line, ready to judge. Their scorecards, their cut du punt, lay in neat pecking order on the table in front of them. Custard huffed and puffed, but Rhubarb carried on. The first dance will be a foxtrot he announced as Raymond and his partner, Brenda, stepped onto the dance floor with judges hot on their heels. Bubble one! Here we go then, lovey, for the monster prize, eh? Mixie, mixie, oh. Cooled Raymond Fox, local scoundrel. Sank. Dur sank. Sank sank. 
The silence that followed was as thick as treacle. Shoulders were shrugged and questions were asked. Nobody had a clue what that was all about. Not even the birds who'd done the judging. And that's the way it was, as more dancers shuffled their way onto Rhubarb's patented dance floor for the next step of the procedures, so as to say. The music invaded, the dance floor set off again. Enough of this, darling, decided Poodle Princess. Me too, agreed Moggy Malone, and they marched right up to Rhubarb's shed and waltzed in without knocking. <laughs> yes, said Rhubarb. Don't blame Mouse. After a short break, Rhubarb announced that due to a small technical fault that has now been forgiven, uh, repaired, so let's enjoy. Rhubarb was waffling when the loudspeakers crackled, and rock and roll started, and drowned him out. A magnificent set of spanners, 100 in all, Rhubarb announced proudly, then dished up an ear-splitting stretch, followed by some tinny old waltz music. The artistic effort for the prize seemed at first like a tie between Moggy Malone and Rookie and Poodle Princess and Custard. But when they heard what the monster prize was, that's when Custard started his weird spanner dance. And that's when the dance floor started playing up once more. And that's why Custard finally won the prize. As Mouse's amplified squeak was heard over the loudspeaker, the dance floor chained gear and the music followed. Within seconds, dancers on the outer edges went flying, while those in the middle simply went dizzy. In a rare act of incentive, Custard sprang into action, grabbed the prize bag of spanners, and threw the whole lot into the works. The dance floor stopped. Everyone took a tumble. And so, without further ado, with this mangled spanner from the works, I pronounce Custard as outright competition winner and hero, beamed Rhubarb, and everyone cheered. Shall we? How about making the crystal ball revolve? Suggested Mouse. We could try it. Rhubarb's alarm clock was ticking away peacefully, enjoying the moment, having a lie in. Rhubarb was already up and about. He'd finished his baked bones on toast and had already started his day by measuring, sawing, hammering and smoothing things over. Curiosity finally got the better of Custard, who had slipped off the fence and strolled over. I know you're going to ask, said Rhubarb through a mouthful of nails. You've got that look. Yeah, well, OK then. Uh, what are you doing? I'm making things smooth, explained Rhubarb. <laughs> More like rough, as you dogs would say. <laughs> Custard tittered. There, perfectly smooth. Not a lump, a step or bump in sight. Ah, now for the rest of the garden said Rhubarb, ignoring Custard. Here, where are your steps? inquired Custard. Steps are a thing of the past. Believe me, my dear cat, we are about to enter the smooth age. Mark my words, it's cool to be smooth. Come on, Mouse. Now look here, what is all this about? And what is that mouse doing with a fur dryer? Custard wanted to know, but Rhubarb and Mouse were too quick. The shed door was closed. Uh, smooth talking dog, muttered Custard and sulked off. That afternoon, an army of filthy looking weasels arrived and smoothed all of Rhubarb's garden. There wasn't a step left to be seen, neither up nor down. When it wasn't flat, there were ramps, smooth, modern, and bump free. <laughs> we're about to enter the smooth age. Custard mimicked as he wandered into the shade of the old conquer tree where Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone were in the middle of a theatrical makeup session. 
Wow! Now that is what I call smooth, whistled Custard. Oh, you are a one, said Moggy. Pass me the fur dryer. Well, uh, blow me down if it's not in the shed, proclaimed Custard, precisely as the familiar sound of the fur dryer buzzed around the breezy garden. That fur dryer is the Dreshenoff Box Theatre's private property. I want it back. I'll count to three. One, Moggy called as she hammered on the shed door, which was answered by the smooth time of the bar. Good heavens, you're hovering. Correct, bellowed rhubarb above the noise. The device is, in fact, a patented rhubarb hover trousers. One-legged flying trousers. He beamed as Moggy stared open-mouthed at rhubarb and the fur dryer that was sticky-tipped to a long pipe and whirring full blast. C countdown in procedure, Mouse called. Sorry, gotta go, said Rubal, and closed the shed door. As Moggy's mouth gaped wider, a siren sounded and a roof port opened, followed by a loudspeaker announcement that hover trousers was about to be tested. Dead on two o'clock. The shed door opened and Rhubarb piloted the hover trousers smoothly down the ramp and into the garden. Humming like a dream, the machine swirled Rhubarb all over as he grinned at the garden animals, the rather cross Moggy Malone and the disheveled Ruby Princess. Swelling with confidence, Rhubarb took up what looked like the beginning of a rather tricky flamenco dance. And with a strum of Spanish guitar, he showed the world that they know walking was a thing of the past. There's only one way to prove it. As Rhubarb turned up the speed, the hover trousers responded perfectly as Poodle Princess clattered wildly towards him. It was magnificent to watch. The birds went wild. Hands high now, and on the half tone, Rhubarb returned the applause to his fans. The couple's grace and magnificence was stunning on them. Gaining a further rise of confidence and matching the escalating approval from the crowd, Rhubarb thought he was flying. And then, he was. The fur dryer controls accidentally nudged the hot, and the dryer's afterburner effect powered Rhubarb onwards and upwards. The fans stood as one. The roar, it was said, could be heard as far away as Barcelona. Or at least, the other side of the shed. Silence. The show was over. As Rhubarb's life swirled dreamily before his eyes, a smooth as silk calm took over as he seized control of the stricken hover trousers and skillfully leaning this way and that, surfing, dodging clouds, birds and turtles, he finally made an almost perfect landing. I'm in another world, thought Rhubarb in a celestial, dreamy kind of way. But no, he was wrong. With nothing broken but the rose which he presented to the exhausted Poodle Princess, he was in heaven. Oh, Rhubarb, darling, you are magnificent, she said. Where's me fur dryer? demanded Moggy Malone as the shed door opened. I think I've perfected hover shed. Bean Mouse wrote the scholar as Rhubarb's shed began to lift from the ground and skim wildly around the garden. What happened to me fur dryer? bellowed Moggy Malone, and there wasn't a window for miles around. It wasn't rattling. Now that is what I call really cool, said Rhubarb. And everyone cheered. In the house, in the hall, a large, hideously mottled mirror hung on the wall. It had been there for as long as the house had stood. As Rhubarb sauntered down the stairs, he glanced at the watery reflections of himself and imagined that a painting of a great ancestor, Sir Rhubarb, 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 had once looked down from the mottled frame upon barking mad house guests mm. as they trudged this very stairway. A chilling thought, shuddered Rhubarb. And as he rambled on down, the mirror suddenly shattered and tinkled onto the stairs. Seven thousand years bad luck. Oh, 
Just a broken mirror and a shattered dream, sighed Rhubarb. Seven thousand years, <laughs> jeered Custard, and Rhubarb beamed and said that it was no use crying over broken mirrors or spilt ancestors. I know. We'll set up an artist studio. We'll paint you. You will be famous. But you don't know anything about art, wailed Custard. Correct, my dear cat. But believe me, wonders are about to be performed, smiled Rhubarb. And before you could say to be or not to be, he was on the bone phone to Mouse, rodent scholar. <coughs> As Mouse was preparing to start the computer, Custard grumbled and muttered about being painted, and Rhubarb threw an artistic tantrum and an old straw fishing hat. Oh, stop fussing and put that on, said Rhubarb in monet tones. <laughs> you will hang on the walls of millions of admirers. I can see it now. The Pink Cat by Rhubarb, he went on in a Picasso sort of way as Mouse jogged the computer into life. Think, Rhubarb, think, puffed the rodent scholar. All you have to do is think Custer's image, he urged. Oh, so you're not painting the painting yourself, scoffed Custard. <laughs> you would not understand, sighed Rhubarb and stared at the tumbling numbers. <coughs> Thirty-two, shocking pink. <coughs> Number four, violent pink. <coughs> Sixty-seven, electric pink. <coughs> Two and four, twenty-four, caustic pink. Eighty-three, intense pink. Number ninety-seven, surprise pink. <laughs> it's working, it's working, squeaked Mouse, and Rhubarb beamed at him in a Salvador Dali kind of way as Mouse melted, exhausted into a chair. Rubbish. Doesn't look like me at all. It will, Rhubarb beamed, and began to smooth and swirl the numbers into a wonderfully wild fantasy of colour. Finally, exhausted, he announced the picture, a masterpiece, and finished. I'm sorry, Custard, it may be your portrait, but you cannot see it just yet said Rhubarb, and brushed him off in an artistic kind of way. No one may see the portrait until the official unveiling. On the lawn at four, everyone. Drinks and nibbles at four o'clock, and a free public unveiling of the painting that is custom. A new picture by my good self, Rhubarb crowed. As Rhubarb's bone clock barked four, Everyone gathered on the lawn and mingled and waited excitedly for the unveiling of Rhubarb's new painting. When the time was right, Rhubarb made a short speech, mostly about his own artistic talents. <coughs> Finally, Custard was asked to step forward, pull the string, and declare the new work, the painting that is Custard, open. And as the curtain opened, an uncontrollable titter tottered amongst the garden animals and finally ballooned into a fit of laughter. <laughs> Doesn't look a scrap like custard, Grin Mole. Even I can see that. No, but it is a rhubarb, said Moggy Malone and all the garden animals stared at Rhubarb in an abstract kind of way. Mouse, this painting is hideous, seized Rhubarb, while Mouse explained that painting by numbers is a calculated risk. But we painted it with help from my computer, he fumed. Now, now, artist, no fighting, sang Moggy. The painting is fine, she trilled. It just needs a bit of excitement, Moggy went on. And as Rhubarb gasped for breath, she scrawled a huge moustache right under Custard's nose and then sang its praises. Ta-da! <laughs> In shock, Rhubarb protested that what Moggy Malone was doing wasn't art. Well, neither is your painting, she chirped and drew a pair of glasses. What about a beard, eh? said Rookie, while Custard reveled in adding a brilliant red nose. 
As the garden animals roared with glee, the painting actually lit up. A rousing band struck up, and fireworks whizzed bang walloped into the evening sky. Oh, Rhubarb, darling, you're so artistic, teased Pooh the Princess with a fabulous piece of acting. Still doesn't look anything like custard, said Mole. Does now, said Rhubarb. Right, artists, your days are numbered, said Custard, and a colourful evening was had by all. Rhubarb was walking in his garden on a day that could only be described as perfect flying weather, an aviator's dream. Big jets scribbled new vapour trails all over a freshly squeegeed sky. He felt the wind in his fur. Ah! Oh, sorry. Oh, Rhubarb. You're so wonderfully clumsy when you're busy writing a play, darling, cooed Poodle Princess. He was still looking up. You know, Poodles, Rhubarb began. Oh, Rhubarb, I know what you're going to say, darling. Your new play is for me, she flooded, but Rhubarb had other things on his mind. Sitting in front of his computer in a flight of fancy, Rhubarb marveled over the pictures of his magnificent model airplane. His love of flying all started with a spike, two strap-on wings, and a garden swing. A long time ago. Waking from his daydream, Rhubarb's think waves began to flow once more. Then he turned to an equally important design job, the trophy when Custard arrived. Have you ever made a model aeroplane? Rhubarb asked, knowing the answer. What? muttered Custard. I'm planning a model aeroplane show. Aerobatics, loop the loop, that sort of stuff. Interested? Uh... There'd be a prize, Rhubarb added. What, you mean money? No, said Rhubarb. A beautiful trophy, which will really be a scrumptious golden sponge cake. I say, an air show. Count me in, squeaked Mouse with great enthusiasm. Custard, can I put you down as a yes? Rhubarb queried. Uh, what, aero bats and things, you say? Aerobatics, model aeroplanes, remote control. You won't have to do anything, said Rhubarb. And with that, Custard scuttled off and said he'd think about it. Now for Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess, said Rhubarb, and picked up his bone foam. Poodles, uh, no, no, you won't have to race an aeroplane, explained Rhubarb. No, Moggy will not have to drive an aeroplane. I just wanted to know if you two would present the trophy to the winner of my air show, said Rhubarb. And with that, Poodle Princess said she'd ask Moggy. Finally, said Rhubarb. They've agreed to present the trophy, he sighed. Ugh, after all that waiting, whispered Mouse to himself. As Rhubarb's alarm clock marked four o'clock, model planes and their excited owners lined up at the end of the old strip of carpet that Rhubarb had put out as a runway. The atmosphere buzzed with aeroplane chatter like, George, Roger, over and out. Well done, said Rhubarb in a high altitude kind of way, as Rabbit's floppy looking aircraft volunteered into place. Ah, oh, Mo, love the headlight. Wizard, what? I say, rookie. Red? Ah, a proper kite, what? Charlie, good luck. <laughs> Ciao. Meanwhile, Custard was on the other side of the fence, doing a deal with some bother birds. He didn't know their names, only that their leader was called Feather. OK, you know exactly what to do, Custard whispered, as Feather climbed into his flying boots and zipped up his sinister flying jacket. Yeah, snorted Feather, who now resembled a foul-looking black aeroplane. And with that, Custard pulled back a loose plank in the fence, and the evil Feather hopped through. Oi! Feather! No hopping! Remember, you are an aeroplane, Custard whispered hoarsely, and Feather lined up with the other model planes. Ahem! Ahem, Rhubarb. 
Welcome to the Model Aeroplane Show. Points will be awarded for graceful flying, he announced, and the race got off with a bang. Everything okay? Smiled Rhubarb. Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone nodded a yes. Neither wanted to tell Rhubarb that they'd seen an aeroplane running. Finally, with the air show over and all planes safely on the ground, Rhubarb addressed the afternoon crowd and those magnificent model makers with their splendid flying machines. I have great delight to announce Custard as winner of the... Excuse me, said Rabbit. Custard's black aeroplane is eating the trophy. You there! You're not a bird. You're not supposed to be a plane. That's cheating, you sticker! shouted Rhubarb and presented Rabbit with what was left of the delicious trophy. <laughs> and you forget flying, you're grounded! he went on. That's where you are, you old rot! And the birds cheered and flew around in circles, and everyone. <laughs> You couldn't put your finger on it, but there was music in the air that day. Everything Rhubarb touched seemed to have a tune about it. Yes, indeed. There was music in the air. Then, halfway through a particularly savage piece of percussion work on a calendar, Rhubarb stopped. Wooden spoons raised. Cherry! Bean black favorite in my garden, he whispered. Uh, morning, Custard. Uh, what a surprise finding you here. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> By the fence, Rhubarb rambled on and gawked at the big black cat. Custard uh, yawned uh, yeah. into the warm morning air and asked why Rhubarb wanted to meet the big black cat. Well, uh, uh, Big black cat. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't see you there. Rhubarb overacted in an appalling kind of way. Oh, I say, I say, to now that I'm up closer, aren't you? Uh, uh, yes, you're. Uh, oh, the honour of it. Such a great musician right here in my very own garden. Rhubarb prattled on as Custer twitched, nodded, and grunted for Rhubarb's attention. It was hopeless. Real nice to meet you crooned the big black cat, and Rhubarb muttered something about getting a gig together. Custer was desperate for a word, but Rhubarb wouldn't have a bar of it. I know, you're gonna say I know nothing about music, Rhubarb missed, and was on the bone phone to post dog in the tick of a metronome. We've got the singers. Moggy Malone can sing and Poodle Princess can act, as though she's singing. We need musical instruments. Yes, post dog, I do know about music. Now, you just get all that and meet me at my shed, said Rhubarb, in a maestro-esque kind of way. Already? Boomed the big black cat. <laughs> just sorting the instruments, said Rhubarb, and, uh... Rhubarb, Custard insisted, we have to talk, it's urgent. Not now, Custard, said Rhubarb, with some sort of accord. Ah, mouse, he went on. Tonight, we have a very famous musician with us. Hear that? Uh, one, uh, two, uh, one, uh, two, uh, two, uh, one. Uh... We'll call it the Lawn Club. Pretty classy, eh? <laughs> Rookie, your security to keep an eye on the weasels, OK? Yeah, security, no bother. I know a few buzzers down the zoo. Good, said Rhubarb. Mo, see if you can dig up a couple of old microphones.
By the time the sun started to roll away behind the shed, things were beginning to hot up at the lawn club. Mould had found the old mics, Mouse had wired up a great sound system, and a couple of post dog's weasel mates had actually turned up with instruments. Cool, man. Real cool, said the big black cat. You born? You genius, he went on, as the big band came together and Custard began to worry. None of them weasels can play music, Custard said with a sigh. Yes, I guessed, said Rhubarb. They're wired up, you see. And by the way, he warned, you really, really, really ought to know. Gotta go. The show must go on, smiled Rhubarb. And with that, the weasels took up their instruments while Mouse tuned them up remote from the shed. Meanwhile, Royal Princess and Moggy Malone whispered do was and it looked stunning. Okay, folks, thank you, thank you, said Rhubarb as Custard tried again to catch his attention. And again, Rhubarb shook his head in a not-now kind of way, and the entertainment began. Night creatures, Rhubarb crooned smoothly, and the birds went wild. Please welcome the Lawn Club, Poodle Princess, Moggy Malone, the Lawn Club's very own big band, the Weasels, and our special guest star, Mr. Jelly Bean Black Baby! <laughs> if I could tell you I am blue, you never believed him, but he knew. Oh, that is not quite what I had in mind. Rhubarb cringed. Mouse, what are we going to do? groaned Rhubarb. The crowd are not happy, they don't like it. It's all your fault, he seethed as he turned on Custard, who tried again to explain as police dog Siren broke into the night air and the rage began. At the sight of the cops, his buzzard scuffled. Rhubarb demanded to know what was going on and police dog rolled straight into a perfect hello, 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 followed by a magnificent Evening all. And this character is a phony, as the big black cat was cuffed. Meet the real jelly bean black favourite, said Police Dog. But he's blue, said Rhubarb. I try to tell you, wailed Custard, and the real jelly bean black favourite saved the day. He tried. Wiz, the home of ABCs, 1s through 3s, and all your favourite kids' TV characters. Now let's find kids' TV. Or I can press this microphone. Wiz, that's how easy it is.